Who is Mark Curran? It is true that America is currently at a crossroads. He's been a lawyer and prosecutor. As an elected official, that is not your money. That money belongs to the taxpayers. He's been chief of the Gang Crimes Bureau. Lake County Jail is a model jail. We have more programming for inmates than virtually any place in the United States. He's a husband and father of three. And you pay for that jail. You, the taxpayer, pay for that jail. And you know what you need to know? You need to know that over 20% of my jail is consistently illegal immigrants. He's now the sheriff. That's why America has the problems, because of the cowardice that exists in Springfield, the cowardice that exists in Washington, D.C. What makes him unique? The reason why we do what we do for the inmates is also for the victims. That we need to send all of these brave young men and women into all these battles all over the globe, and yet we can't secure our borders. In this documentary, we will explore who Mark Curran is, what makes him tick, why he's a different kind of sheriff in town, and most importantly, who the man is behind the badge. By becoming state's attorney, I created an opening in the office for a position of an assistant state's attorney. And Mark Curran was the first uh, assistant state's attorney I hired after I uh, became state's attorney. Um, Mark worked for me for a number of years, uh, advancing through the office, uh, becoming a felony assistant, uh, in a top-notch trial attorney trying the most serious cases in the office. I've known Mark for a while and I, I knew him professionally before I knew him personally. Uh, he worked in my office as a prosecutor. He worked, of course, in Lake County as a prosecutor. Been in law enforcement a long time and is well known and well respected. But I got to know him later, especially after he became sheriff, uh, on a more personal basis and I have great respect for him, both personally and professionally but I, I really spent most of my career in that business of, of locking people up. And I believe in the legal system, I believe in police, I believe in law enforcement, I believe in the Constitution, I believe the police are the, are the good guys predominantly, they wear the white hats, and that uh, the job that they do is the job that uh, deep down everybody should want done. On May 25th, 1996, Mark Curran married Irene. 13 years later, they have three boys and a dog named Gip. Mark said that he was going to call me, and I, you know how guys are, yeah, I'm going to call you, whatever. And Mark came, and I lived in the city, he lived in Lake Forest, and he came downtown, he came to my apartment to tell me that his phone wasn't working, and he didn't want me to think that he wasn't going to call me, and that was it, I was gone. I was like, oh my God, I, any guy who would do that is just something special. When we were in the hospital, Mark changed little Mark's diaper. And I remember he called the nurse over and he said, did I do this right? And it was so cute because, you know, he didn't babysit like I did or anything, but it was, you know, you were like, oh, oh but he's calling the nurse over and asking me to change the diaper correctly. So I think I learned about him that, that he cares about family so much, you know, and and that he really wants to see our boys succeed, but he wants us to be a good, nice, happy family. The most important thing in, in Mark's life, clearly, um, is his wife and his three sons. Uh, anytime you're with Mark, he'll talk about his sons and, and what they're doing. And, they're, and if you see Mark uh, interact with his sons, they obviously have a very good, close relationship. People don't see that part of him. He, they don't see him when he's with his boys. He loves his boys. A and he's such a gentle, loving man. However, he's n nobody's pushover. Um, and, and, and people don't get to see that part of him because most of the time he's in the spotlight because of some atrocity that has happened in our, in our county. And I want people to know what kind of, you know, I, I'm glad to call him my friend. In 2005, Mark made this decision. I'm going to run for sheriff. Okay, Mark, we're on for the ride, whatever. You're gonna do it, have at it. And you know, and I, I think in the beginning we're all like, what, what do you, okay. And you know what, the one thing about Mark, both of us being attorneys, I think we both respect each other's careers and our career choices. Um, I will support my husband in whatever he does, because, and he will I'm, support me in what I do. I mean, he does, I do, and it's, it's kind of nice. It's a nice compliment. 
And when he decided to run for sheriff, okay, some new project. And it was fun. Um, we did a lot of parades. We were all over the place. Because the one thing about Mark is he doesn't do something just 10%. He does it 110%. We sat and talked. And he said he was nervous because he didn't know for sure that if he was going to make it. And I looked at him and I said, you will make it. If the Lord wants you to be in this position, you will make it. And he did. And he's been the best. What I've done in terms of professionally, that I have laid the groundwork to be able to do the job that I do. Upon winning election in 2006, Mark enrolled in the police academy, a bold move for the new sheriff who already had all police powers. Just the fact that he went through that rigorous training as a lawyer, um, lawyers aren't always used to that, uh, was very, I was very impressed by that. He wants to know what a policeman should know. He, wants to, he is a policeman, but he wanted to do everything ordinary policemen do. His going to the police academy, that could have backfired on him. But honestly, he wanted, he did that because he thought it would be good for him to learn what his deputies know. And, and it was. It was a great experience. I learned a lot. Learned a lot about um, some of the struggles in terms of police work that, um, you know, it's a tough life. I ran as a Democrat. I was elected as a Democrat. I was a lifelong Democrat. I switched over to the Republican Party and I did so for a number of reasons. There was always an issue with Mark and the Democrat view of um, the, the, they call it the women's issue of the abortion. And that really bothered him that if you were either pro-abortion or not, you couldn't be a Democrat who was anti-abortion and it really bothered him that he had to make that decision. One of the things that he did, uh, you know, Mark got elected as a uh, Democrat and I'm a Republican <clears throat> and in the last year when I was running for election in 2008, um, he came to me and he said, I'm going to endorse you um, for state's attorney and I said, well, thanks a lot, Mark, but you know, um, that's probably going to create problems and in the Democratic Party since you're, he says, I don't care. Mark is pro-life, and th that means he's, I think, believes in a consistent ethic of life, and uh, it's reflected in all his values, his family values, his personal values, uh, his friendships. We want to arrive at truth, and when we feel blessed enough to have clarity, to see where the truths lie, geez, why the heck would we not stand for them? And actually, the quality of politics in Lake County is higher than it is in a lot of places. But, you know, you, you get a lot of people that talk out of both sides of their mouth. Mark only talks out of one side of his mouth. Uh, that's, that's what I feel like. I've been given a vision of clarity. And with that vision of clarity, I, I really don't feel like I have much choice in the matter. When I switched parties, I had no choice.